All right, were y'all able to go grab your lunch at least a little bit? Because uh, I know this is right after that lunchtime. And so I want to be respectful to all the technical folks coming back towards me, uh, after me, because this is going to be filled with a lot more humor. And it's going to be connecting with your end users. I found this approach very effective, working with uh, various OWASP chapters, as well as the um, Houston Java user group and some other Java groups. So uh, just let me know, do we want to go ahead and start the recording now, or are we already going? OK. I, All right. I think you've done that there. So. Okay. Uh, do you want to start now? Yeah. So like I said, uh, okay. oh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I will introduce no, you. No, yeah, because that's fine. Because there's a good reason. But <laughs> anyway, I think you've met Joseph already, and he's going to uh, present on Brit. And um, clearly, from what you know, it's going to be an entertaining session. But before that, as a thank you for being speaker, I'd like to present you with this. Oh. Um, on behalf of Love Oh, Dogs. thank you. So, oh, cool. You're very All right. Thank Thanks. All right, let me put this over here before I lose it. All right. So. This should get you perked up for the rest of the sessions. If you're not in a comedic mood, I apologize. You're probably going to get there, as well as maybe get envious of some of your family and friends and your kids. So keep your money in your wallet and wait a moment before you go out and make the big purchases, because you can spend a lot of money very quickly. So just a quick about me. Going way, way back, started working with Atari Basic. I don't need to go through all of that. Uh, these are all my own photos. Uh, I'm not a professional photographer, so you're going to see some lighting and maybe some framing errors in there. If you want to get any of this for your OWASP chapter, just reach out to me. I am a mentor for the OWASP San Jack College student chapter. We're one of two student chapters right there. So please reach out to me or one of the student leaders if you want to get engaged with us and help us spread that message and get those students into a better career path. All right? And like I said, if you ever want to collaborate, I've got so many ideas running in my head about stories that I can tell. And there, there's my personal email, joseph at apmras.com. Now I just went through and <laughs> grabbed a number of those domains when I got hit by layoffs yesterday. And please, please, don't fall victim to what the standard media does in all of their messages. Don't use the hacker hoodie. There's so much better examples. Leave the hoodies to eSports professionals. This is going to be one of the few slides where I actually have animation. So are you a builder? Are you a breaker? Arg, you know, because you always got to have that arg in there. Or are you a defender? And yes, that is an actual piece. And you can play games if you know how to use that. So contact me afterwards if you want to see that. This goal is to basically bridge the gap between your different teams. If you can get them thinking in a different way that's not dry and boring, you can also go through and, and make it a little bit easier there. I can come up with so many different uh, acronyms for developers and so many different uh, just starting points, but functional, resilient, extensible, secure, healthy. You could go with fast. You could do uh, you know, any number of things in there. This is just that high level. How do you go through and set the framework and get things going? The best thing you can do to help all your development teams is leverage the OWASP resources. And now they've got OWASP Cornucopia, so that you could go through and play some games in there. But everybody's going to need that instruction manual. Sometimes it'll just be enough to do your daily work. Other times, you've got to navigate through all of those mountains. Now here, you, know, you got Shakespeare. To build or not to build, that's not the question. Because if we don't build, our security plans, our policies, and build those relationships with our team members, we're going to be looking at Hamlet and saying, poor Yurik, I knew him well. And then you're going to be saying, I knew my company well, but now it's been taken over. Now, there is also 
Like just a quick reminder, OWASP top 10, and for the 24, you know, you gotta have something <laughs> for your application team to look forward to. Right. This is what I feel is a good, clear representation of some of the new uh, OWASP top 10 references. They might not 100% align with what you're thinking about, but for this one, you've got the standard Spaceman. And we're all familiar with this. You can see there's the new logo, there's the worn out one. We'll come back to um, some of those known vulnerable uh, components there. But you might not think of your partners causing you an impact. Because I come from both that performance and the security perspective. But over here, this could be one of your unconstrained partners who isn't fully versed on best practices for interacting with your API. So that's why this one is shooting at you. Now back there, maybe your partners aren't trained and you're getting into that yellow zone because you always have to be aware of working with that application team. If you go down to the performance language, you're gonna get a lot more buy-in than just simply talking about security because they wanna make sure that their partners, their customers can actually have those requests fulfilled. Then back there, you know, you got your standard bots. Uh, also have some automated scanners that are going through and trying to figure out exactly what you have. And then your uh, user account takeover <laughs> where you might be bombarded by all of those credential stuffing. The cryptographic uh, failures did mention about your data at rest and in transit and protecting it accordingly. So we all know that medical data, especially for our children, is extremely valuable before they've even got that full credit rating. So on here, I just wanted to bring up a couple of things with, wait a minute, I thought my data was safe in the cloud. And then down here, old man yells at cloud. So kind of reinforcing <laughs> that a little bit. Uh, and you know, where's my data, not where's my pants. SQL, command line, unfortunately, injection has been there time and time and time again. Reason why I chose the vampires and with his coffin in the back, because injection seems like it's coming up from the dead time and time again. You know, it seems like there's not a day that goes by. And when they have that injection, they can then suck the life out of our data and basically leave us exactly where we don't want to be. Uh, you know, it's not a cup of Java, but it does have the C colon backslash. You know, I couldn't find anything with slash bin bash, uh, but you, know, you have to go with what's most vulnerable and what you can get in those sets. Uh, you know, kind of mix it up a little bit, but when you're talking about injection these days, please do not use any veterinarians or medical professionals, um, regardless of where you are on that spectrum, let's just be respectful of those. So that's why over the years I've changed it, uh, some on these slides here. The insecure design, this is one of the newer ones for the top 10, the way that they've changed it around. Uh, and it's not just an overall, uh, like just stopgap kind of bucket for everything else, but it comes back to more of that methodology. Developers never want to have poor code. They always want to be able to give their customers exactly what they need. So we need to honor and celebrate their accomplishments and the good that they do. For example, you may have the Halloween King and he can do everything right in his town and he's able to accomplish all of his objectives. But then one day, he's starting to take a look at that new program language or that new module it goes, oh, shiny, let me go into that path. And we all know what happens then. Ah, he spoils the next holiday. So you gotta make sure that your developers are celebrated for what's good, but also kind of pull them back. And sometimes it's more of the product managers that you have to pull back. So right here, you know, he's gone through and now he's a part of the Christmas holiday but he has to be reminded, this is the way back to secure code. Uh, 
know. So if you're not familiar with all the POF reference uh, <laughs> references, just come see me later on and I can give you all that story. With your security configurations, we all know that out of the box, things are wide open. How many default credentials are there with admin, admin, admin password, and all it takes is a few quick steps to set that up. Also, it could be as something as easy as not exposing the stack trace externally. Because if you pop up and show that 404 error, we see that entire stack trace, you see the operating system, you see the exact version, that's a tremendous amount of leverage that the uh, criminals can have. So it's in this one, you know, it's going from that transformation. You always have to be aware of what the current state is and get to where you want to be. Also, you'll notice, you know, here I grew up in Space City down in Houston, so I've got a lot of <laughs> space ones there. Now they did go through and change it up a little bit to your vulnerable and outdated components. Used to be known vulnerabilities, but they're always gunning for your jars. <laughs> and they want to go through. And yeah, I know I see some folks that are just kind of laughing at some of my corny uh, uh, items there. But you know, this is going to stick in your mind, isn't it? <laughs> and it does the same way with the Java user groups there. Just another reminder here, you know, when components first start off, they're going to be all shiny and new. But as they get used, you'll start to have that paint or the end user experience rub off. And that's why you have to have a continuous review of what you have. And you need to be aware of what are you going to do when your applications break? How are you going to compensate for that? Otherwise, your end users are going to end up uh, feeling like this after they've slipped on that banana. How many different versions <laughs> of Tomcat, Apache, or any dependency that you have in your organization? How many are there? And how many do you not know about? And how many are still stuck in that desktop, way there in that closet that nobody knew about? And who knows, they might still be running OS2 Warp, our Novell Netware 3.11, and every now and again they're saying fire phasers. Uh, so here, it's not just how many different configurations, but I also wanted to point out things that maybe you were going to add some of those features, but you never got around to it. But that vestigial code is still there, and that's going to be another attack surface that you weren't aware of. So you have to go through and not just see where you are, but do those passive scans and active scans in your environment and have that full on discovery there. No matter how large <laughs> or how small or even how divergent the two different development teams might be. You know, if one's saying, hey, I want to stick to the ground and just have my double decker bus, but the other one saying, spaceship, spaceship, spaceship. You know, you've got to make sure <laughs> that they're on the same page there. So this is just, you know, I think everybody can relate to this. Uh, the other thing that might come in handy is if you were doing it live, just kind of dump all those out onto the table and then see how many spill <laughs> and you're having to go through and find them later on. That will also encourage those development teams to think about what's going to happen there. All right. This one took a little bit of work to go through and figure out exactly how to come up with this story. So I was thinking of different things, Joker stash, uh, NPM dependencies, uh, and basically how difficult it is to scan those things from outside your organization. That's where you're using some of the OWASP tools, dependency tracker, uh, dependency check, uh, and the rest of them. But this way, you know, you've got your developer here, and you always have to remind them that all of those dependencies, all of those integrations, uh, outside APIs they might be relying on, they need to be aware that there are 
dangerous parts out there. And if they're not aware of it, it's going to be transparent to them. And the criminals are going to be hidden a little bit. But you've always got to make sure that those Git branches and dependencies that you're used to using haven't been taken over by a malicious actor. Uh, because open source, you know, it takes time, it takes money, and sometimes those projects get abandoned way too early in the cycle. A lot of times there's going to be those back doors. So understanding where that is uh, and framing it in terms of financial impact. The financial impact is actually what gets the business owners, the application teams, the people that have the money on the table to invest in whether it's performance or security or integrity. And they're also the ones that are on the boards. So the easiest way to show them the value of your security efforts and being able to align with those development teams and being a part of that is to show them the financial impact. Unfortunately, today, most executives are aware of ransomware, um, but we do need to be uh, more cognizant of those government entities, those small schools, those counties. Um, it could be those MUDs, the municipal utility districts that we're not thinking about, but they do have critical infrastructure ownership of the water, the power, and we all know the impact of not having power resiliency because of our last winter here. Right. Used to be in previous top tens, you had insufficient logging. But now it's going to be securing, uh, sorry, security logging and monitoring. Developers need to understand when they need to ask for help and that it's OK to ask for help. And when you come in, you need to have an attitude of humility and respect for them instead of being a vigilante, thinking that you know everything. If you come in in all your black suit and say, I'm Batman, you know, that's going to turn them off. And sorry, I'm not Will Arnett, so I can't quite do that exactly right. But we have to be more like a partnership. And you can see that there are other superheroes along the spectrum that take a cooperative approach. And later on, I'll talk a little bit about insider threats. But if you look at some of the superheroes and some of their approaches, you have to wonder, where are they on the spectrum? Have they gone too far to the dark side? Or are they still on the light? Are they in that gray area? So you have to be aware of the personalities of the people on your team and how well they fit in. Now, just because you have someone that can throw the sharp uh, objects from far away versus an archer, you'll notice that those are completely different mindsets. And one's willing to be open and honest about their identity, the other one cloaked in darkness. Just an aside about personality on here. And it's not just logging what's bad, but you also need to log what's good so you're known good conditions so that you can do those comparisons. If you don't know the expected messages, uh, strings, uh, event sources, you're not going to be able to detect what's wrong. So understanding both the good and the bad and then sending that appropriately to whatever auditing system or event management system. Because these days, auditors want to see that flow of when it is good, when it's bad, but when you have those uh, errors pop up, what recovery actions do you have to then get your application and your system back on track uh, along with being able to show all of that audit trail. This one I just did a little bit 
differently. It's, uh, this one's a little bit harder to articulate and show just on some slides. But you always have to make sure that you are sanitizing your data. Never trust anything that's coming in. Make sure that you have those patterns and don't just use regular expressions. Make sure they have the parameterized queries and all of the applicable security frameworks that have been shown to be known good frameworks. Again, go back to the OWASP guides. So many people get hung up on checking off that box for the OWASP top 10, and they never see the full picture. It's OWASP top 10 risks, but we have proactive controls. We have cheat sheets. We have different tools. We've got WebGoat. We've got Juice Shop. We have various different vulnerable web applications that you can test in a safe way and get those junior programmers up to speed along the way. Because you know, sometimes if you can sanitize that data up front cleanly, it's a little bit easier. Sometimes you have to take the nuclear approach and come back and deal with all that fallout. Other times it's just simply welding some of those pieces together to make it uh, clear there. People don't use secure passwords, and they use them over and over and over again. You have to anticipate that, and as much as possible, protect your users. If you aren't protecting your users, not only will they get upset, but they might come back and sue you and try and claw back some of that money, even though it was their fault. So this one, you know, just talking more about multi-factor authentication and get away as much as you can from just SMS texting. Go with the apps and ideally if you can go with hardware devices, uh, but that's a little bit more expensive for most organizations these days. So many people now are broadcasting each and every move they take on social media. If they're doing all of that, or if they know when the company has a vacation or an extra holiday, these are gonna be prime attacks. Uh, you also need to let your junior members of your team know that they can go through and reach out to other people to get that additional check off and sign off before they just send the money out the door. You know, because actually, He's got the tools right here in his hand. He's got the shark repellent that would keep away all those jokers trying to extract the cash through business email compromise. Okay. If you haven't seen what if or think about that, I apologize here. Our code can easily get corrupted. If we have those discussions ahead of time, those tabletop exercises, and say, what should our code be? What could it become? And by having those comparisons side by side, you know, the cheerleader here and the programmer uh, with the businessmen, and then also, what are your iterations? And what happens? And what could you replace that corrupted code with uh, for those other items there? Again and again, we all know <laughs> that we have the limited time and they don't, right? So we have to just kind of clue in those folks. Now, this is one thing that I touched on a little bit before, uh, but it is important these days to understand. We have so many people that end up becoming disgruntled or jealous or actually pulled away and they're actually recruited to that dark side. So, you know, this is where we also need to help various people on their career path and understand their motivations, uh, their skills, along with their weaknesses. Because, you know, just because you want to be the next sidekick doesn't mean that you have all the skills right now. And rather than being corrupted, and resurrected by Joker or Scarecrow, depending on which iteration. Uh, it's better to have that build up. 
you know, it could also be that people change teams out of fear or out of desire. So that's why we have Sinestro up here with the green lantern over to the yellow lantern. And there's a whole spectrum. You can look at that later on. Now, sometimes it's not of their own making. It could be that they were traumatized or damaged uh, by someone else. So we have to be able to help pull those people back in and know that they're going to be sometimes they're willing to make the right choice. Other times they're going to go over to the wrong side there. Right? And if we neglect investing in our team, they can become radicalized <laughs> and go their own way out of frustration and pain. Um, the hackers are going to calculate <laughs> the best time to infiltrate your organization. And a lot of times, they'll just go through there. They're going to be waiting, sometimes with that stopwatch, to hit it just right. But these days, we're seeing them plan it in days or hours ahead or <laughs> on the calendar for those special days in your environment. Oops. We still have to say it, and you know, we have to drill it into the heads of our friends and family just because they get some shiny new watch or coffee maker or used to be DVD player. You know, they've got to realize that not everything is safe, and those can be attack points not only internally to them, but being used externally. This is also another example of your security mentors maybe not being aware of those other teams that are trying to wreak havoc on their systems. So these bots are simply waiting for that attack order and wake up and go on from there. Not quite application security uh, on the next kind of things, but it is related to security hygiene. And one of my other goals here was to make the overall training programs that your HR department requires you to go through every three months. Oh, I got to sit through, look at all these words. And if I really want to just cheat the system at the end, I'm just going to take screenshots, not have to listen to it, and just check, check, check. Being able to badge in you know, is important. Otherwise, you could have dastardly felons <laughs> that are kind of come in and change up your times, whether it's supposed to be duck season, or now it's rabbit season, or it could be somebody else. Sometimes people have pity on somebody. It could just be a person out there that doesn't have the badge. Oh, are you waiting for somebody? Oh, who are you waiting for? It's like, oh, I'm waiting for so-and-so. And they pick that up from LinkedIn or other social media. <laughs> so it looks like they're supposed to be in there. But you know, they shouldn't be. And it's not just a matter of doing it yourself. Uh, very recently, I had somebody that went ahead of me. And they said, oh, do you need me to hold the door? Nope. Security practice, each one of us logs in separately. So taking that extra minute to go through it, and I even had to challenge my boss one time and say, you can't piggyback. Did you leave your badge? Yeah, I left it at my desk. So do you assume the business risk <laughs> of this violation? So he assumed the risk. Therefore, I was in the clear. I took care of the security requirements, but then let the business uh, work there. So this one, you know, you don't want to open up the door because <laughs> you don't know who else could be coming in from the SysStar system. AARP has articles time and time again on how folks in their population, but across the board, have issues. This is open enrollment season for Medicare. So our grandparents, our parents, our prime victims for them calling up and asking for 
their social security number, their Medicare card, and they don't think twice about that. So we need to help them out in those situations, whether it's somebody claiming to be from First Metropolitan Marshall Bank, or if it's somebody saying, this is Sylvester from System Support, your system has been compromised. And then this is where we have to come in and tell our grandparents, I think I heard a scammer. I did, I did. It takes a lot of people to work together on our development teams. But you don't have to be a DJ. And you can get upset when people call you a DJ. Sometimes, you know, you just have your own band that you might not be completely OK with people knowing. And so you call in that original DJ. Um, and it never hurts to have every single kind of guitar out there in every kind of variation. Because <laughs> this way you can hit the spectrum whether it's a mariachi band, uh, punk rock, glam metal, or you know, your old style synthesizer keyboards. Used to be big there in the 80s and 90s when I was growing up. But remember, we're in Texas, so you always gotta have the fiddle in the band. We're not Louisiana. <laughs> when we work together, we get that cumulative effect. So it's not just us in silos, but we're able to protect and make our applications even stronger, more resilient, and able to withstand anything that's coming out there. Security, it's not a laughing manner. It's not magic by any means, even though sometimes we try to make it appear to our bosses so that we have continued job security. But in Texas, you know, sometimes it is rocket science. And we do have several different colleges here that still have PhDs in aeronautical engineering. Uh, it's also a way for us to get involved in mentorship. Okay. There are some great sets out there. Uh, one is the women of NASA. If we don't understand the past contributions of that entire spectrum, we're not going to be open to the insight and thoughts of the various populations. So we need to be able to understand and celebrate. And I don't know if you caught it at first with the telescope, but look at the universe <laughs> and the galaxy and the way that the picture is hidden there. Notice it's got uh, <laughs> a muse or um, a female representation there in that universe. It's our responsibility to pass on the knowledge and train that next generation. If you don't like all the space themes, whatever for your organization, you could always switch it up and make it <laughs> exactly what you need there. Right. And that is my presentation here. But what I want to do is just make this an open-ended conversation. Now, because I, I can't tell you how many hundreds and hundreds of minifigures I have and that I was pulling out to try and figure out things uh, and how many pieces I've started doing inventories. But I'm not kidding when I talk about how much money <laughs> you can start dropping if you're not aware of it. Um, and you'll start to see more and more engagement with uh, building because you've got different various shows out there, celebrities. Uh, you know, they're prominent and they're actually actively recruiting adults to come into the mix. So I want to go ahead and see if you all have ideas or questions and brainstorm a little bit about how we might make it work in your environment before I need to pass it off to the next speaker. All right. So. Not hearing any comments yet. Um, I'm going to try not to go through that uh, comedic dead space. <laughs> but some of the ideas that I did have uh, coming alongside here that I didn't yet um, fully developed were notice I didn't have any wizarding world <laughs> scenarios. But for those, I did want to do a little bit more 
development, say, of the mentors. Because there are a large number of mentors of various backgrounds that you could go through and uh, come into play there. If you needed to talk about uh, pipelines or like they were talking about in the last session about those phases, that might be appropriate for trains. And then you could have your different uh, tracks being derailed or what have you there. Okay. So I know I went really fast. And it wasn't my intention to throw technical information to you, but to keep you awake after lunch and get you thinking. Um, if you do have ideas or you want to get some of the photos, or you want me to collaborate with your OWASP chapter, or if you want to contribute to the Sanjak student chapter, uh, please let me know on that. So appreciate your time. It gives you a little bit of a bio break as well, and before the next uh, presenter has to come on line. Thank you.